I'm live sitting out here in my Mustang. Uh, and I'm going to ready to do a cigar basics course essentially with this Cuban Cohiba Esplendido. Uh, it's got a little bit of extra moisture working in there, so I decided I better smoke it before this joker falls apart. So, some basics about cigars. Cigars consist of tobaccos from many different regions and countries, primarily in South America. You can get some from, you know, leaves from uh, Ecuador, Dominican Republic, Haiti, um, Mexico, even Cuba, Dominican Republic, Honduran. I probably repeated some names. Uh, but the prize catch of all are cigars from Cuba. I think it's more because they're rare and not because they're necessarily better, although my all-time, all-time favorite cigar is a Cuban co uh, Cohiba. or Well, it's a Cuban uh, Monte Cristo number two. But the Cohibas are really good cigars as well. Hi, Tiff. Um, I'm doing a live cigar, Basics 101. Um, so uh, different ways you can cut a cigar. You can cut a cigar with a guillotine cut. One of these guys right here. Or you can use a punch. One of these guys right here. And basically what a punch will do is it'll punch a little hole in the back of the cigar. For me, it depends on the size of the cigar and the taste that I want to get out of it, uh, what kind of punch I'll, uh, or what kind of slice I'll use. But for today, the big fella is using the guillotine. And you can see here, where I've already snipped that baby up there. Mm -hmm. Yes, for bigger sticks, definitely want to do... Well, actually, you can even do a, a V-cut for bigger sticks or a punch too. One of the things that a punch does, especially on a big stick, is when you draw the smoke into your mouth, it shoots a direct path to the back of your tongue, so it more intensifies those flavor profiles. When you smoke a cigar, you really want to draw the smoke in, hold it in your mouth for a little bit, swirl the smoke around, and then and blow it out. And that way, all the different, uh, I think olfactory glands can... Uh, uh, can can uh get the flavor of the cigar yeah i'll do a v cut the next time i actually have to buy a v cut cutter i've got a punch i've got the uh guillotine but i do not own a v cut so i'll do a v cut so three basic components well i'll talk about the different parts of the cigar um oh thank you uh you got the head uh or the top of the cigar here the foot is the bottom the head normally has a cap on it, uh, and that's the part you want to snip off. Uh, I can't think of any single cigar I've ever seen where it doesn't have a cap on it. So if you see a cigar with a cap on it, you need to call somebody and find out what the heck is going on with that. Um, the cigar itself uh, has three different kinds of leaves in it. Uh, the first is your filler. That is the stuff that's down here in the middle of this baby. And what you're really going to taste in the cigar. I hope that comes in pretty clear. Uh, and thanks for sharing. Um, the binder or, or the filler is actually wrapped in another leaf that can be from a completely different place. Uh, and that's going to be called the, the binder. And essentially, as the name implies, the binder binds the filler leaf together. Um, they don't have to be from the same country of origin. You can have a Nicaraguan filler and a Dominican binder. The last thing uh, that goes on the cigar is the wrapper, and that's the, the leaf that you see on the outside. Now, a couple of notes. I'm going to show you something here. You see that little gray speck? Sometimes the cigar, especially when it's aged for a while, will get what's called plume on it. That's good. But if you get this white stuff that's furry, that's called mold. That's bad. Now, if you have mold on your cigar, you can still smoke it, but you need to clean it first. You can go online, and there's all kinds of different things that you can do to clean off the mold from your cigar. But there's one exception. If there is any mold on the foot of the cigar, throw the cigar out. Here's why. You don't know how far up into the cigar the mold goes. And do you do not want to be inhaling any cigar mold. 
it'll burn up essentially on the outside, but especially after you clean it off, so it won't be a problem. But if there's mold in the foot, she's done, and you don't want to be inhaling any cigar mold. So uh, that's a good note there. But uh, you basically look at the outside, the wrapper. That's going to give you your first indication of how things are going. And then uh, after you snip it in, it's time to light. Now, you can see mine is, is, is coming apart. It's really because it's moist. It went from being dry to very moist. So, uh, hey, Rinky. So here we go. Now, a couple of ways you light a cigar. One is with a lighter. But you really don't want to use a lighter because when you use a lighter, you wind up inhaling butane. You don't want to do that. What you really want to do is, hey, Mama, what you really want to do is use some wooden matches. And let me show you how. I'm going to see if I can do this while I'm holding the phone at the same time. Here we go. Got you the light. You put that down there by the foot. And you just slowly toast. Toast it. And then you draw it. Mm -mm. See that? You want to make sure you have a nice bright ash all around. Rotate it. And where the way you rotate a cigar is where it's lit real good. Put it on top. The hot ashes will actually go down and burn the lower ashes. And that will keep your cigar from having what's called a canoe effect. A canoe effect. There you go. Mm. Look at that. A canoeing effect is when the half of the cigar will burn, like the top, and the bottom won't. Oh, wow. Uh, I don't see that I have seven viewers, but you folks that are out there tra tracking, please swipe and share. I'm doing some cigar basics right here, and I appreciate the uh, the love. So here I am. Got this gang going. And cigars have many, many different flavor characteristics and profile profiles like anything else that comes out of the ground. Like tomatoes taste different from different places. Corn tastes different from different places. Peaches taste different from different places. Apples take, taste different from different places. Well, so does tobacco. And tobacco, like anything that comes from the ground, have different flavor profiles. Um, descriptions of a cigar can be cedary from the wood that you age them in. Could be beefy. Could be chocolate. You can get cocoa. You can get toffee. You can taste toast. You can take yeast, like from bread. You can get floral notes, like orange or... Uh, again, leather, you can get descriptions that are chewy, you can get things that are nutty, uh, leathery, I mean, as many different kinds of descriptions as you can possibly think of, you will get in a cigar. So one of the things you want to do when, uh, when you smoke a cigar is try to close your eyes and identify the flavor. To get help as a newbie, one of the things you want to do is find out if your cigar is rated. Oh, peppery is another one. Thanks, uh, uh, Taylor Numis. Um, one of the things that, that really helped me a lot was going to magazines and other places, places that sell cigars. Look at what the descriptors are that they say of the cigar. And when you smoke it, see what you get out of it. And it might help you to figure out those flavors that you couldn't quite place your finger on. But um, now that you taste it, you understand because many of the flavors are subtle. And yes, you want to go and check out some blogs too. So there'll be subtle, subtle flavors there that you can't quite place your finger on. But if you go and see a review for a cigar, you go, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's what I taste. Or you can go to my book, Thanks for the Memories, uh, Cigar Lover's Journey Through Smoke and Ash, which you can also see and get on my blog. Thank you very much. And the blog is... TheLancerLife.com. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. So I'm here enjoying this 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 wonderful Cuban cigar that my wife picked up for me uh, down in Florida. 
Mm -mm -mm. And another thing to note is that the cigar flavor profile will often change somewhere along the cigar because in some cases, different tobaccos form the blend. So you can have multiple uh, cigars or tobaccos for the filler and then the binder and then, of course, the wrapper. In some cases, you can get cigars that, uh, um, that uh, have multiple wrappers. The changes is all dependent upon how the blender rolls the cigars. Tobacco leaves are, cho are, are picked from different area, areas of a tobacco uh, tree. And typically there are four different areas. And I can't remember the names, but, um, uh, but you know, we have to look them up. Um, and we'll do that for another show. But different area, different tobaccos have different properties. Now, the tobaccos at the bottom of a tobacco plant tend to be thinner and have better combustion. The stuff up at the top tend to be thicker, and those are, I think, generally used for fillers. They're more elastic, and they burn a little slower. So, depending on how a, blue, uh, 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 a um, blender puts the tobaccos together will possibly change the combustion and the taste along the way. And as in anything else, different tastes will hit your tongue at different levels. If you get something at the tip of your tongue, it's going to be uh, possibly bitter uh, or sweet. And the back of the tongue is bitter and off to the side, you're going to get salty. So those are going to be the things that uh, impact the, the flavor profile as well. You'll notice how much of the tobacco is at certain places because you'll notice when you smoke a cigar, there are going to be some cigars that you smoke and it's going to dry your mouth out. You're going to need to have a drink constantly with it. There are going to be some other cigars you smoke that when you smoke it, you'll feel like you need to spit all the time. All of those things are affecting you. And I don't understand why people are saying you can only see my mouth because... I can see my whole face, my hat, my glasses, and uh, my shirt. But yeah, if you get a drying stick, I mean, that's because the tobacco blend is, desi is designed to hit your mouth at different, uh, different, different places and have, uh, have an effect. Now, this has kind of a taste of like a white pepper. You get some toasty notes. It's not as full body as you would come to expect many Cuban cigars to have, but I think that that's one of the challenges they're having in Cuba now is the consistency of the cigars that are coming out of there, which is why I say all Cuban cigars aren't better than any other cigar from any other place. There's some really finely crafted cigars by Dominican and Honduran uh, cigar companies. So don't don't assume that all Cubans are better than anything else. That's not necessarily so. There are going to be different levels of quality uh, from different manufacturers and there's going to be different um, you know differences between some higher level and lower level roles and, and you know you can get into all kinds of crazy variations. Another thing you want is a nice uniform ash while you're smoking that. Hopefully you can see that. And another characteristic of Cubans is a gray ash. Uh, those are some of the indicators that let me know that this is a Cuban cigar. Now, it could be a counterfeit, but, um, but, you, but it's Cuban, definitely, because it's just got a very distinct, distinctive taste. And there's kind of a sweet, orange, kind of mellow, creamy thing uh, that's happening as well. That's another characteristic of of a good cigar. Um, it's actually kind of medium body, but it's not, you know, beating up the inside of my mouth. So this is a real good, perfect, just leisurely chilling in a ride, listening to the radio cigar. But they just tend to be expensive. A Cuban cigar will cost you anywhere from... 18 to 22 U.S. Ah, 
definitely worth it. Pair this up with a nice cognac or a brandy Mm -hmm. or a bourbon or a scotch and you're in for a real, real nice, nice evening. If there are any of you others out there, I'd be glad to hear your comments or see your comments and answer any questions you have uh, concerning uh, some very, very um, basic cigar moves here. Mm. If you're a non-brown liquor, uh, cigars pair well with wines. Um, The thing about anything is you want to make sure that whatever you get complement each other, whether it's your wine and cigar, your wine and food, your cigar and your brown beverages. You don't want your taste buds battling between one thing and the other. You really want something that's complementary. So, with this cigar, I wouldn't pick a red wine. I'd actually pick a white, something between a Chardonnay, which I love, but not necessarily a real potent uh, uh, oaked Chardonnay, maybe something a little lighter, and possibly a Pinot Noir, because this is a light cigar, medium-bodied cigar. It's not... Uh, a, a, a bold red, which is my favorites, would dominate this. I'd have so much of the tannins in my mouth, I really wouldn't get to enjoy this. Um, this would probably be good with a vodka, if you're a straight vodka drinker. Um, because the vodka is very neutral, and it too won't compete with this. Now, if you're going to get something fruity... Uh, you might want to do something that's not too overpowering sweet. And again, you think Cuban and you think South America, you think tropical, probably pair with something sour uh, more than sweet. So a nice uh, margarita or a tequila with a squeeze of lime, a Blanco white as opposed to something dark in age, or I would do a dark age sip and do it straight. Uh, a rum. Rums would pair well with these as well. So um, it just depends on the cigar. If I had something bolder, I'd want something bolder to pair with it. But you can never go wrong with a brandy or cognac. Never, never, never with a cigar. I can't think of any cigar that wouldn't pair well with a brandy or cognac. Or uh, also a, a nice, um, a, a nice aged rum, like a Diplomatico, something made uh, uh, in the traditional Grand Solera. Hmm. Look at that ash. We're still hanging in there real good. Um, The taste has kind of stayed consistent throughout. I actually like that. And you just enjoy it. Look, Cigars are not cigarettes. They're not meant for you to digest as fast as you can and then move on to the next one. They're meant to be enjoyed, young people. This is where you take your time, you slow down, you're just relaxing, you're chilling, you ain't trying to hurt anybody. Welcome, Smoking Bullet. Please, please uh, uh, share. Um but whether it's a, a Cuban cigar or any cigar at five bucks, it's something that you really want to. This this is an opportunity to put the brakes on the day at some point. It's like a speed bump. You know, you don't rush over a speed bump. You tear something up. When you sit down and have a cigar, you really enjoy a cigar. Cigars are not things that you just grab. You select a cigar. I select a cigar based upon the, the mood I'm in who I'm with, what I'm doing, what I'm drinking, what I'm thinking about. Um, I get something for however time, you know, something that will last the distance of a journey because you really don't want to put a cigar out and relight it because all that tar will sit up here at the end. And when you relight it, it tastes bitter and nasty. You don't want to do that. You want to get something that you know you're going to be able to start and finish and enjoy. You enjoy a cigar. If you need something quick because you got to inhale smoke, get, go to cigarettes. Leave cigars alone. It's not for you. This Cuban is hanging, hanging tough with me right now. 
Uh, again, it's a little moist and began to crack. It, I, I had it in the car for a couple of days and it got dry, put it in my humidor and uh, it started to unravel. And that gets me to another point I want to talk about, humidors. You need to be able to protect these investments. You know, this is a $20 cigar. You got to protect it. You just can't bang this thing around everywhere. When you ruin a cigar, it'll smoke different. It'll break apart. The ashes will fall on you. Just It's just nasty and gnarly. So you want to invest in a humidor. And if you don't buy enough cigars to warrant a humidor, get a plastic Ziploc bag. They have these little brown humidification packets that you can put in there. Boom. You put it in there. You put it in a nice place. Keep it out of direct sunlight where it'll dry and crack. You keep it in a place with nice humidity. Don't sit it on the radiator or on top of a, 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 a vent, a heating vent. But you want to keep it in a modest temperature. Again, it's tobacco. And, and, and most people think of tobacco in terms of dry, crushed up stuff in a cigarette. But no, this is, look at that. Let me show you that. See how you can squeeze that baby? This is moist. Uh, and you want to keep your, your cigars in a nice uh, 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 temperate environment. Uh, temperature matters in the aging process. The humidification matters in just in preserving it. Uh, and you want to put your cigars in a nice place. And if you're going to be moving them around a lot, worth it to invest in a case. I don't have my case here, do I? No case. Um, so that the, when the cigars move around, they're not getting damaged. You don't want nobody sitting on your cigars. You don't want them bending in half. You don't want to put them in a shirt pocket or a coat pocket or nothing like that. You take care of your investment. With humidors, the more the merrier. The best thing to keep a cigar box humid and maintaining proper humidity and temperature is actually more cigars. Of course, you got to put your distilled water in there, but the more cigars you have, the better the, the temperature is going to uh, be maintained in the humidity because all the cigars will absorb some humidity and then let off some of the humidity to the other cigars, which is why, in addition to these $20 cigars, I also have 3 and $4 cigars uh, in my box that they're basic neighborhood local cigar shop cigars. Um, don't cost a lot. They're my driving around the city cigars. But when you have those in your box with your, your important sticks, they actually serve as another purpose. Uh, they provide something to help uh, protect your other cigars in your box. So worth the investment when you see them. Um, but I hang time. Um, one of the other reasons why it's good to have those, those sticks is so that if you're out smoking with the guys or somebody comes over and they see you smoking a cigar and they're a rookie and they want to go big time and smoke a cigar, I would never, ever give one of my $20 Cohibas to a cat that never smokes a cigars or I've never seen him smoke one. I give him one of my $3 cigars for him to beat up, decide midway through that he wants a cigar and then uh, decide, uh, nah, I really want to smoke it. Oh, yeah, the other thing is ladies. Yeah, sorry. Sometimes ladies uh, that, that want to try a cigar and smoke it, you don't want to, to give the young lady, if she's not a cigar smoker, one of your $20 sticks, and then she takes two draws on it, and you watch it in the ashtray all night. You'll spend more time watching the ashtray than the lady because you'd be fuming over that $20, especially if you kicked out some money for dinner and a movie too. That's an expensive date. So you have some of the other cigars uh, for the, the newbies or the neophytes. They can beat up. You won't feel bad. They protect the box, and they won't cost you an arm and a leg to replace. So that's a good piece of advice. Mm. Still consistently going there. Uh, hang time is good. I'm not sure if it's going to, uh, stay up there, right? I'm looking at the ashes thing is kind of falling apart. Uh, but again, I think it's because of the, uh, going back and forth from being humid and dry and then real humid, especially on days like yesterday. Um, and I don't want to fire while I'm in here. So, um, so you want to look at that. I did a, um, 
Mm. When it hits your lips, it tastes so good. Um, I did a, uh, um, uh, a Periscope uh, a couple of weeks ago on buying local cigars. And, and here's what I'll say about those. Oh, no, that ash was going to hang on for a while. I had to I had to knock it off. Oh, well. Hey, Smoking Bull, let's see you joined again. So I did a Periscope a couple of weeks ago and talked about buying cigars from your local cigar shop, uh, the local brand. I uh, went over a couple of reasons earlier, but I'll go over them again. One, they're inexpensive. Two, having them, uh, giving them away, you won't feel bad. You won't you won't feel bad if you give one of those away to somebody who's a new cigar smoker and they decide not to smoke it. Um, three, they keep the other cigars in your box good. But four, the other reason why you want to buy some of these local cigars or cigars by uh, a local cigar shop is because they're pretty darn good. When you think of an owner that's going to put his own brand of cigars out there and sit it side by side with Nat Sherman, with Perdomo, with Fuente, with Ashton, with uh, uh, Esteli, um, my father, and all these great brands of cigars, what are the chances he's going to sell his cigars in comparison to those unless... The smoker is going to get something out of it. Um, the cigars come in different other, other, um, uh, and that's right, uh, uh, Taylor Numas. They want to be great too. Um, and the benefit can't just be price because great cigars, you can get great cigars uh, for under five bucks. The Asylum 4x44, uh, 2012 vintage cigar is a $4.50 cigar, and it ranked in Cigar Aficionado's top 25 uh, in, nine, uh, in, in 2013. So if you're getting a uh, nice price point for a top 25 cigar and uh, a local uh, owner has his brand out there, the it's got to be able to compete in taste. Uh, and the benefit is the lower price so talk to them find out where they get their cigars rolled they don't have somebody in the back of the the, the shop in a hut rolling cigars uh, many of the places that i go to actually have their cigars rolled in either honduras plant or in the dominican republican uh at, at places that do brands for <laughs> child labor law effect no that's one thing that you won't ever see in a cigar factory. Typically, it's female, and they're a little older because rolling a cigar is a skill that requires some maturity, uh, some nimbleness and, and fleetness of, of, of hands, um, and some skill in being able to select good tobacco from bad. I mean, when you're sitting down and you're rolling cigars, it's not a manufacturing operation. It's a selection process and making sure you have the right leave and uh, and rolling it and, and putting a cap on and all that stuff. Yes, women run the world, uh, especially when it comes to cigars. So when you talk to those local owners, find out where their cigars made. They'll tell you what the wrapper is, what the binder is, what the filler is. You go and look up some of your top cigars, you'll find that they're using some of the same fillers, binders, and wrappers. And they're being wrapped in some of the plants that wrap some of these cigars. So give them a try. Um, their price is not as steep because they're not paying for the marketing. Normally, they're not paying for somebody to slap a cigar band around them. Uh, and they don't have the complex marketing and distribution requirements. They're literally selling them out of the trunk of their cars and their stores, just like I'm selling my book, Thanks for the Memories, uh, A Cigar Lover's Journey Through Smoke and Ash, which you can see uh, and purchase on Amazon.com uh, or uh, order through me on my website, www.thelanchalife.com. And for those of you that are out there that I can't see, on my app, uh, would you please share? Um, mm, I'm sharing. Look, mm, mm, mm. 
If you were here with me, I would share this with you. I really, 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 really would. But I can't. I want to, but I can't. <laughs> yeah, so um, so anyway, buy local, know your cigars. There's a lot more to this hobby or love affair than just picking up something and uh, clipping it, sending a torch, drawing on it for 20 minutes, flicking ash, and then going about your business. Cigar smoking is more than a hab, uh, 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 you know, more than 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 a hobby. Um, it's a pretty neat thing to do. It's associative. When I talk about the stories in my book uh, and think about things right now, uh, I can tell you about where I was, who I was with, and the cigar I had. When I went to see Temple University play Notre Dame down at uh, at the link this summer. Um, I had a Nat Sherman, uh, uh, Churchill, um, when I spent my first day in my apartment, when I moved to Chicago, I had a Fernando Leon Bellicoso. Um, when I took my future, thanks smoking bullet. Uh, when I took my hopeful, son-in-law out with me we went to I treated him to a steak dinner because uh when my wife and I weren't living together he took care of my wife until I could get out to uh, Indianapolis and help her when she had some surgery and she he was just great uh he's the father of my grandson you know I took him out to Peterson's and I had the asylum four by 44 that night uh I can associate some of the most memorable events of my life with a cigar. The cigar was a part of the event. And that's what they are. They're not cigarettes. They they are they are another um, thank you. They are another component element to some great moments, some special time, special occasions, special events, or not at all. Just you can just remember your first. Um so Get out there, go to a local and buy local. Listen, the online cigar places, Thompson Cigar and Cigar International, are great for finding stuff that you can't find at your local shop. But go to your local cigar shop. Meet the tobacconists. Meet the people that are hanging out there. It's a community. One thing that people have in common when you go to these places, it doesn't matter your walk of life, rich, poor, working, not working, black, white, uh, Catholic or Protestant doesn't matter. When you sit down in a room with cats with cigar, you got something in common. You got some common ground. Uh, brings people together, creates and fosters some fantastic relationships. Some fantastic relationships uh, I have formed started with a cigar. Believe it or not, uh, long-lasting, meaningful relationships have started with a cigar. So go to your local shop, see what the guy has. Be a good patron to him. He'll be a, a good host to you. Give you a place to go and smoke, hang out. You won't get yelled at. Um, meet some new guys. Make some new friends. Keep these guys open. And if there's something that you can't find at your local tobacconist, then I highly, highly encourage you to go to the online places like Holtz, um, Cigar International, Thompson Cigar, JR Cigar, there's a bunch of them. Um, because one of the other things I found is certain cigars are only carried regionally. Buena Ventura cigars, can't find them on the East Coast, love them in the Midwest. In fact, one place I went to in the Midwest has their own special size made of Buena Ventura. Buena Ventura, $6 cigar that was in Cigar Aficionado's top 10 uh, once upon a time. Great cigar, not that expensive, but you can't find it on the East Coast. Um, so when it comes to that, that's the reason why I go to some of the mail order cigar places. So, mm, mm, mm. this Cuban Cohiba Espondido is a flat out work of art, man. That's a beautiful, 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 beautiful cigar. Um, yeah, this is all Cuban, too. Um, it's kind of getting towards a, a medium to full uh, body taste now. 
It's rich is a, is another thing I would use to describe this cigar. It's just a it's just a fantastic stick, um, burning real nice, taking the edge off the day. I put in a lot of work today. My book is going to be uh, sold in four retailers, one in Camden, one in Doylestown, and two in Philadelphia. So I had a had a real good exceptional day today. Hmm. Look at that. Yeah, man, this is working. So that's my Cigar 101 today. I'll probably do some other sessions of this. If you like, hit me up on Twitter at The Lancer Life. Hit me up at my blog, again, at www thelancerlife.com. Uh, please share this video. I'm trying to uh, get myself out there. This is new for me. I'm a pretty private person, uh, but I have a great book that I'm trying to get in folks' hands. And one of the things that uh, my uh, editor uh, told me I need to do is, you know, I got to let people know I'm out there, let people know what I'm talking about. So uh, I'm going to be doing some book signings coming up here. Um, I forget the blog, uh, Cigar Events uh, is going to be posting uh, uh, on their website and their blog a couple of cigar signings I have coming up. I'm going to be in Ridley Park on Saturday, May 7th from 6 to 8 at Jacob's uh, Cigar and Tobacco Lounge. And on Friday, um, May 7th, I'm sorry, Friday, May 6th, Man, I'm going to be at Lit Cigar Vault in Swedesboro, New Jersey. So if you come to the site, uh, the information on where they're going to be is there. The book is also available on Amazon.com. Bring a book and I'll sign it. Buy a book and I'll sign that too. I want to thank everybody who joined, even though you, even if you didn't comment. I uh, appreciate you joining. Uh, this is Cigar 101 Live. The big fella is signing out.